And welcome back to our Math Wednesdays here. We are moving on through our Math Up program, but I've gone ahead and switched over to the next section. The lessons that we have been looking at have been dealing with additive reasoning, which is kind of that basic level. And at this point, we're wanting to move up into our next level. And you'll notice right up here at the top, it says multiplicative reasoning, which is the next level up. And so we've jumped over to our common task, and I've chosen for today's purposes the common task for the grade four open number line. And the common task in the Math Up program is kind of that entry point to get an idea of what the students know, what they understand, have a general understanding of where they are at with their multiplicative reasoning. Once we see that there are, maybe there's specific sections that they don't quite understand, that's where we jump over to our focus task at that point. But for today's purposes, we're just gonna look at the common task. So when we go to our common task for grade four, the open line number, it says place each number on the number line below where you think it should go. And so we have this line, but there's no labels, there's no numbers, it's completely open-ended. And so we have to figure out where would I put each of these six numbers on this number line. And so when I look at this, I see 333, 1,000, 250, 730, 505, and zero. There's two or three things that kind of jump out at me. The first one being that this one is in my hundreds, and this is in my hundreds, this is in my hundreds, this is in my hundreds because zero is considered to be a placeholder, could actually consider it to be in the hundreds because it would be zero, zero, zero. And the 1,000, really I could say, you know what, that's almost in the, in the hundreds as well because that's just 10 hundred or 1,000 in this case. So understanding that and looking at it, I can go, okay, do I have relationships between these? Is 250, do I know of a relationship of it to 1,000, 505, 730, 0, 333? So I'm going to use some estimation here as well because I don't need to be exact. And I look at this, I go, you know what, 250, that's actually one-fourth of 1,000. The 730, that's actually close to 750. So that's like three-fourths of this number. 505, again, just slightly over half. 333 would be a third, and zero, of course, would be at the start of the number. But the other thing I can do, if I'm finding that's too complicated, I don't really know all those, all those different forms, I can also just look at the 100 digit. And so in this case, I would look at this number, I would go, that's a 10. And that's a two, and that's a seven, and that's a five, and that's a zero, and that's a three. And again, I know that I don't need to be exact on this number line in terms of the placement, but I've got to be in the general area demonstrating that I understand the value of these. And so if I just go off of that, zero, two, three, five, seven, and zero, I can start placing those on my number line. And the way I'm gonna do this, working with a PDF, I've actually gone, this is one of the really nice things that we have at, at OCSB. And with our Google Read and Write, we actually have text help for other functions, including the PDF text help. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna use my push pin function here. And I'm gonna put, Oh, is it going to work for me? Apparently I'm not. Oh, there we go. So I'm actually going to put, I'll put a zero in here. And that puts my push pin. And if you click on my push pin, I see that I have a z value of zero there. And then my next number, if that's my zero, then my next number I said was a two. So I'm gonna click there. And I'm gonna say that's about there. It's 
So I'm actually going to put in my 250 just to make sure that I understand what my number is. And the reason I did that, actually, I can go back a little bit. If that's my zero, maybe I'll use the 505 here because the 505 I knew was right kind of in the center. And so I'm going to put my 505 in there. I knew and I said that my thousand is going to kind of be the value. So what I'm actually saying is this entire number line, this entire number line is actually a thousand worth a thousand. But we're going to look at a couple other functions here. I'm going to put my thousand in there. Do that. So there's my thousand. There's my 500. There's my 250 because my 250 is kind of halfway in between them. And my 730 is going to kind of be halfway in between those. And my 333, I said, was one third, which is going to put me about there. So I have my values of zero, 250. 333, 505, 730, and 1,000. But I can do a couple other things as well. Um, though that's kind of the standard way of doing number lines. But if I come back and look at this and do it in this fashion, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my push pins out for a minute. And I could actually go in this fashion where I'm going to put my zero down there. And I'm going to put my thousand over there. And traditionally, we think of going from right to left. But in this case, I'm going to go left to right. And there's absolutely nothing wrong. And again, because I've got my two anchors or my two endpoints on my number line, I know that my, 500, my 505, again, kind of in the middle here, my 730 is going to be down there. My 250 is going to be about there. And again, my 333 is going to be there. However, I have one more option that I can do here. And that is, again, I'm going to take my push pins out. There's absolutely nothing that says that I have to use this number line with a value of 1,000. And so I'm going to, again, put my push pin here. But I'm going to put my 1,000 there in the middle. And so in reality, what I'm saying now is my number line actually has a value of 2,000, but the concept is going to remember, remain the same. My 505 is going to go there. My 730 is going to go there. My 250 is going to go there. And my 333 is going to go there. And so it's all about this relationship. And that's why this would be considered multiplicative reasoning, because as long as I've got my anchor points of zero to a thousand, everything that's going to else is going to come off of that. The 505 is in the middle. The 730 is kind of three fourths. The 250 is one fourth. And the 333 is at one third of whatever that value of the number line is. And so that's how I know where to place the 333. Thank you very much, folks. We'll see you next week.